Hello, thank you for tuning into another photo critique. I promise you are gonna learn a ton here and improve your own photography. My name is Mike Lloyd. I have been a professional photographer for 12 years, teaching for 10 of those. And about a decade ago, when I got certified by PPA to be a print competition judge, I learned how they want us to view images and it totally changed the game for me because it taught me what to look for in a powerful image so then I could create stronger images as a photographer. And every opportunity I've had to enter a competition to get feedback, uh, I jump on that and I recommend everyone do the same. Not competitions where you can go in and you just get a score or a rating compared to the 30,000 other people who submit on the online whatever, but when you can actually get feedback from a knowledgeable judge and learn about photography. That's what my critiques are all about. So even if it's not your image, you can hear constructive criticism on somebody else's work, which will absolutely help you change your own photography for the better. So enjoy. Let's dive into image number one. Okay, so impact is the very first thing that we look for as judges. Like how does the image first speak to me when I first look at it? Is it exciting? Does it jump out at me? Do I feel something? Or do I have to like figure out what it is that I'm seeing? Obviously I don't have to figure out what I'm seeing. This image is pretty straightforward. So the first thing I see is her face. Also, these markups are why I love doing this in Photoshop, because it's way easier than that photo or the image preview, whatever. So first thing I see is the face. It's centered, it's the most in focus, and it's the brightest. And that's how our eyes view things, which I feel is ideal, because that is the focus here in the image. Some things that are done really well. I love the expression. The look on her face is fantastic. Posing done very well. Nothing is squished. Nothing is like out of proportion. Nothing looks super awkward. And good use of fuzzy blanket to hide things in there. Using clothes and props are great ways to cover things in clients without having to like, you know, physically make it look like you're covering things. So great use of that. Also good separation from the background. She is considerably brighter than the background, which is fantastic also. A couple things though, uh, and good depth of field because the fuzz up here on the blanket is not as sharply in focus as, you know, her face that we actually want to see but there's still a lot of detail that I can see in the, the fuzzy blanket here. So I would use an adjustment brush and either, you know, reduce clarity a little bit, soften that a little bit, just so it's not as sharp, maybe even darken it just a touch, drop the highlights on those. It'll almost create like a, like a vignette effect to help draw the focus back into the center. Also, I'm not sure what's going on over here, but that, that needs to get cloned out. Also, I like the gradient that there's a different background on this side than this side. It just, it makes it more dynamic. I'm digging that. And even though this is kind of a busy pattern over here, it's out of focus, it's darker, it's great. Her hair looks a little frizzy out here. Um, and again, that's one of those things like the, the fuzzy blanket. I would knock down those highlights a little bit to make it a little less noticeable and also less sharp. And then with the skin too, it's just not smooth transitions in the gradients. And I think it's just a little bit harder light, but you can see like blotchiness in the skin, you know, especially around here and up here and on her face around here, which isn't quite as flattering. So, I mean, and that's really editing. Throw this through Imagenomics Portraiture, which is my favorite skin smoothing program. Uh, and that'll clean that right up. If it doesn't, or if you don't have it, you can always do frequency separation. And I've got a killer video in the boudoirguild.com that walks you through how I do skin editing using frequency separation. My buddy David Bird at Reality Reimagined did the video for me, you know, boudoir editing techniques, and it is brilliant. It's exactly what I do to edit my own stuff. When I edit, I have an editor that I use now, but when I do it, that's what I do. So overall, stellar image, strong, a lot of, a lot of great things done here, um, but really just clean up the distractions that are here in the textures and the shapes, uh, and then fix the splotchy skin. I think you'd have a much stronger image. And then little things that bug me, like the, the material here in that 
that collar. I'm not sure what you call it. It's like a Sailor Moon outfit or something. It's kind of bunched up, you know. I always have my stylist jump in because I never touch my clients, but my makeup artist will jump in and she'll adjust straps, fix things to keep them all lined up. So that's one benefit of having a second set of hands at your shoots. All right, let's go to the next image. Okay, so again, first thing that jumps out at me, this big white spot. Our eyes always see the brightest thing, the thing in the sharpest focus, and the thing with the most contrast. Like that's just how our brains read any sort of visual scene, whether it's a photo or out in in nature or in the world. And it, it almost looks blown out like we've lost detail in the highlights here. I know it's hard when you've got darker materials, darker background, and then bright white things. But again, this this is just all about learning, you know, lighting, how to feather things. <laughs> feather. Um, basically aiming your light farther off to the side so it's not aiming directly at the reflective things. Or if you're shooting raw, you should have no trouble using an adjustment brush and dropping the highlights on this area so that it's it's more in the, the neutral midtones like this side is. Because it totally takes away from, from our subject here. Uh, I love the pose. The hands are soft. They are perfect. I love the way they frame the body. I love her expression. The hair is placed very, very well. Very well executed. Um, I normally wouldn't suggest cropping in the widest part of the hips. It doesn't bother me as much in this photo. I would still like to crop a little bit farther down though. Definitely not up because you'd be through the middle of the arm or through the middle of the chest and we don't crop there either. And we got distracting things in the background, like all the blue sparkly stuff here. It's really the only, or purple, I'm colorblind. The cool tones in the background here, they're the only cool tones in there. And there's a lot of texture going on. And it looks like there's more objects in the background. So I, I can't quite tell if the wings were placed there to hide things in the back. But I can see there's a lot of things just going on in the background. So controlling the spill of your light. You know, maybe adding more light onto the subject to darken the background to knock down those distractions. Good depth of field because they're out of focus, but there's just a lot going on back there that really takes away from the magic we want to see right in here. And again, the same skin editing that I see in the last one. It looks like some editing was done, but still splotchiness in the skin is not quite as flattering, I, I would definitely work on that a little bit. I like the use of the wings. They're not centered though either. I'm also a big fan of asymmetry, but this wing is like going over part of her head. And this one looks like it's a couple feet out off to the side. Like the wings should be attached here and here, but they're like floating up by her head like they're upside down or something. I don't know, like they need to be lower on her body because I, I feel like this is where the wing attaches to the body here and that should be at her shoulders. They just look kind of out of place there. I mean, it could be great for framing. It just, again, it's it, everything in the background is distracting from the person that we want to see. Well, that was a fun one. I hope you learned a ton there and I would love the opportunity to give you feedback on your own images if you would like. You can email me, mike at boudoirguild.com and send over your images, set up to five per critique and I would be happy to help you improve your own craft. And as you see how I've done it, I'm not making fun of anyone. I'm not criticizing anyone's character or personality. This is strictly about the photography and how do we improve as visual storytellers, both uh, from a technical perspective and then just as storytellers, how do we make stronger images? So if you'd like to learn more about taking these kinds of photos or monetizing them, I have some great videos here on this channel for you to check out. Whether it's landing new clients, it's posing your clients, it is lighting your clients, or what to charge your clients, it's covered here. And if you want step-by-step -step instructions on how I generate multiple six figures of revenue in my own business, you can head to boudoirguild.com and I will walk you through everything I do so that you can build a business like mine. You are amazing. We'll see you inside.